Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. And in this video, I like to show you a couple of different ways you can use to talk between the siblings. So if you look at our current setup, we have a content view. And inside the content view, we have a vertical stack which contains customer lists, which you can see on the right hand side. And on the remainder of the part, we have the customer details, which simply contains a single label. Now the question is, how would I select something from the customer list, which is a separate control, and transfer the value to the customer details? So just like React and just like Flutter, the siblings, basically the customer list and the customer details, they cannot really talk to each other directly. They have to talk to the parent, which is content view, and then the content view can send down the information. Unless, of course, you're using the environment variable or some sort of a global state, which we are not. So how can we do this? Well, let's first go into our content view. This is one of the ways and create a state. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a state. We'll call it selected number or selected input or whatever you want to call it, selected number, I guess, which will be integer. That's also fine. Okay. And we are really not going to initialize it with anything. You can even initialize it with null or something. That's fine. All right. So now we have a selected number and this is a state and we can pass that state to the customer list and the customer list can then set it up. And then later on, we can pass it to the customer details. So if we go to the customer list, you can see that there's nothing going on over here. We can go ahead and create a binding. We can call it selected item, which will be of integer. And now whenever we select anything, so if I go over here and, well, first of all, I need to adjust this to pass in the binding. So let's go ahead and pass in the binding to the preview provider. And we'll just pass in one. It doesn't really matter for us. Let's go ahead and build that. And we forgot the var keyword. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to also put it most probably inside a horizontal stack. We just want the row to be completely clickable. There we go, horizontal stack. Let's go ahead and try it. After that, we are going to say dot content shape will be rectangle, perfect. And we are also going to add a spacer, all right? Now for this particular control, which is the horizontal stack, we can go over here and say on tab gesture, and we can do something over here, which is selected item equals to index, all right? Now we can go back. So whenever we select or tap a gesture, do a test uh, and then it will, select the selected item to the current index. Now, whenever we're using the customer list, we have to pass in the thing that we want to pass. So customer list, you can see we need to pass in a selected item, which is self dot selected number. This means that any time the customer list is going to change the number, it's going to be reflected in the selected number. And now finally, we can pass in the selected number to the customer details. So let's say selected number and we can pass in self dot selected number. Now let's go ahead and jump into customer details. And we are going to take binding, which is selected number, integer, and finally, we can go over here and print it out. So we can say self dot selected number. All right. And obviously we need to update this part also. And we, we can pass in some sort of a number. So constant, let's say one. It doesn't really matter for us for now. Let's go to our content view. Let's go ahead and build that. And it is complaining right now. Let's see. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that and resume. Okay. Let's go ahead and 
that's the play button. So now if I select any of these things, you can see that it is actually passing those values, right? Although when we do initialize it, it actually sets it up to zero. You can set it up to something else like, you know, nothing, or you can make it kind of like this. So we don't really have any value for now, but now obviously we'd have to go ahead and change everything. So in the customer list, we have to make sure that we are setting the nullable. And this is going to trigger a lot of other effects you can see over here also. For some reason, actually, it does it over here, and I couldn't figure out that why it is showing on the index, because the index has nothing really to do with anything. So that's kind of weird. And then the same thing with customer details. So let's go to customer details. We have to update that so that we are passing in the nullable int. And then if we want to print it, we'll simply go ahead and unwrap it. This is not a really good way to unwrap it, obviously. If you do want to unwrap something, I would say it's something like this. So self dot selected number if equals to null, then we can display it's maybe nothing. Else we can say self dot selected number and we can unwrap it. Now, obviously, if we are unwrapping it as a string, we have to use string interpolation. There we go. And we should be able to unwrap it. Let's go ahead and run it again. Let's go resume it and let's go and press the play button. So now you can see that since we have made it nullable, we don't really see any value selected unless and until we actually select some value. Great, right? So this is one way of passing the value. So what we have done is that we have created the state at the top level, which is on the parent, which is a content view, and we are simply binding or sending that state to the child widgets or the child views, the customer list and customer details where they simply get displayed. Actually, in customer details, you don't even need to be a bindable expression. So if you go to customer details, you can simply just, I guess, just pass in the value itself because you're not really changing it anyways. So let's go ahead and build that. And over here, it's not a bindable expression, so you can simply pass in just the number itself. It's just used to display the values. All right, so let's go ahead and do it again. Let's go ahead and resume it. Let's go ahead and play it. And the effect is exactly the same. So we are now talking between two siblings which have a common parent, which is the content view. And this is all fine. The only problem is that we have to pass the value over here. I think the much better approach might be in this situation if the customer list control or the view can actually delegate the events back to the parent so that the parent can do whatever it wants so that we will remove this particular kind of like passing in in a constructor. Now, although we will remove that, but we have to then use a different event. All right, so let me show you that approach. All right, so we'll start with going to the customer list. And right now, whenever we are selecting, the tab gesture is happening, we are simply selecting the item. What if we pass in this event to the parent? So for that to work, we will have to create some sort of an event. So I can say on selected item, and over here we'll be passing in the item. So let's just go ahead and say integer item because we are actually clicking on an integer and it's going to be returning us anything like void. So now we can actually go ahead and over here we can say on selected item and we can pass in the index, all right? And we don't really have to unwrap this anymore. So we'll go back to this, we will remove our comment out the binding also. So let's go ahead and remove the binding. There we go. Well, we have to remove the binding, but we still have to provide the implementation for on selected item. So if you say on selected item, it's going to be something like this. We will take an integer and it will return you nothing. All right. Now let's go back to our content view. And in the content view, we are not 
we're going to pass in the selected item, but you'll see that we will be passing in the, I mean, the selected number, we'll be passing in the selected item. So this is going to give us something. So in index or whatever you want to say, selected number in. And now we can set this up. So we can say over here, self dot selected number equals to selected number. Okay, and that is pretty much it. So what we have done is that, although we are not really passing in the selected number and doing all of that stuff, we pass, we, we kind of give the opportunity for the parent view, which in this case, a content view to take in charge and do whatever it wants. And that's, I think a much better practice because now your customer list is exposing these events like on selected item which you can actually use to, to do whatever you want to do. So you don't have to pass in the selected number as a state or anything. You just have to implement this on selected item event and then you can do whatever you want. Maybe you only wanted to set the selected number and that's fine, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you wanted to do something completely different. All right, so you can do those things over here. And in Flutter, uh, this kind of a pattern is very, very normal. And this is how we build Flutter widgets by exposing different kind of events. So you learn like different ways. Now it's up to you to decide which one works for you. I kind of like this kind of a scenario because it gives you a little bit more flexibility, more freedom to get the number, select a number, and then do whatever you want to do. So depends on your case by case basis, you can choose one or the other. Hey, if you want to learn more about building Surf UI applications, then check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. This is the best selling course on Udemy. And you can see there are close to 2,500 students enrolled, great rating, and more than 13 plus hours of content. We're gonna start with the basic by learning about creating and combining views. Then we're gonna dive into building list and navigation. I even cover MVVM design pattern and then implement a complete coffee ordering application integrated with Web API. Later on, you're going to dive into core data integration with Surf UI and also creating macOS, watchOS, and iOS application using Surf UI. So this is an amazing, amazing course. And if you're learning Surf UI, this is the best course that is available. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the links in the YouTube description. Click on the link, get the course. If you use the link in the description of the YouTube, then you will get the best deal and I will well, keep a little bit more revenue. So thank you so much for supporting my course. And if you have any comments, please let me know.